Godzilla minus one might just be the most personal Godzilla story we've seen so far. And I'm not just saying that because this is a very intimate story about a country and a family trying to recover from, you know, the travesty that was World War II. No, no, no. I'm saying this because Godzilla is a f menace. So much so that I think this movie places him in that pantheon of horror movie villains. Up there with like the worst of the worst because this version of Godzilla has for whatever reason a personal vendetta against this one single guy. It's crazy, and you don't just feel sorry for him, you feel like, Jesus Christ, what made Godzilla so angry at this dude? I can say this with clear honesty, I thought Godzilla's actions in this movie reminded me of a certain Thanos story, where he just repeatedly came back and abused the same guy over and over and over again for his entire life. Kind of very similar to what happens here. But damn, did I absolutely adore this movie. Hi y'all. I'm Bayfond, and I absolutely love Godzilla. I was practically raised by the monster himself as I was watching him my entire childhood. I've seen almost every Godzilla movie several times over. And that was a bit of an accomplishment when I was a kid back in the 2000s because you couldn't just look up Godzilla online and just find a movie whenever you pleased. You had to go out and go to some place like Blockbuster to rent out a movie and then when you were done with it, you returned it, grabbed another one and repeated the cycle over and over and over again. And if you were a kid, you probably focused a lot on the same two movies and just repeated those over and over again too. Uh, for me, it was Godzilla SOS and Godzilla 2000. Yeah, I do love me some Millennium Era Godzilla. But needless to say, Godzilla is fantastic and I love almost all of it. I said almost. Yeah, the new American Godzillas haven't really done it for me, like, at all. Like, they do have some incredibly badass scenes, but I gotta be honest, the story is just so abysmal that I kind of find them unwatchable. I mean, so much so that I actually think that the 90s American Godzilla is leagues above and beyond. But you know, that's just me. And maybe that's just a little bit of nostalgia speaking in my stead. Maybe if I watch the new Monarch series, that'll change my mind, but I haven't done so yet. But after the release of the riveting Godzilla X Evangelion crossover with Shin Godzilla, I couldn't be more happier to see the series come back. So I was hyped as hell when they announced Godzilla Minus One. And especially when they said that this was gonna be a callback to the prior Godzilla movies. And the clearest way that they could show us they were doing this was by making this a period piece. Godzilla in the backdrop of the final days and in the aftermath of World War II. A fantastic decision, if I can say. Where we actually get to follow characters that actually matter and feel like they have an impact on the world. Primarily, we follow Koichi a young man that didn't fulfill his duty as a kamikaze pilot. He comes back to a completely devastated Tokyo to see that his life before the war doesn't exist anymore. But hold up, hold up. His name's Koichi, right? How come I was able to guess his name before we actually heard it? I mean, why would I just think that if, if, unless, of course, he was Koichi in Diamond is Unbreakable's live action adaptation. He makes so much sense now. Sorry about having to go off on this beaten path over here, but it just bugged me so much about why I recognize him so much. Why is he still named Koichi? Does his face represent what a Koichi is like? Is that what Koichi is always going to be? I don't know. Maybe this is some sort of alternate reality where stands didn't come to fruition and it happened a long time before the events of part four. Who knows? Godzilla x Evangelion already happened, so Godzilla x Jojo's, hey. Regardless, back to the story, right? And Koichi didn't come back unscathed. No, no, no. He's seen true horrors out there, his comrades dying right in front of him, all because of Godzilla. And I think this is a really big point to talk about because this is hearkening back to Godzilla 1954, Gojira, where Godzilla is a symbol. He is the atomic bomb. He is the dangers and devastation of the war. He is the worst parts of humanity. I mean, they go pretty heavy handedly on Godzilla is the atomic bomb in this movie too, because... <laughs> That definitely shook my seats in the theater. Godzilla in this movie is also the embodiment of post-war PTSD. And I think this is the most important thing that Godzilla signifies in this movie. Because anytime that Koichi goes to sleep or anytime that Koichi tries to do anything at all, he's reminded about the horrors of Godzilla, the mistakes that he thinks he's made and the people that he failed to live up to. And when Godzilla comes back, it isn't just a literal monster coming back to destroy a country, it's the war coming back to Koichi. 
everything he fears and everything he knows coming back and looking at him dead in the eyes. And this is put pretty blatantly in the story as well. I mean, they don't really sugarcoat anything that they're trying to say here. Koichi just really can't catch a break, man. From that first island that Koichi lands on where Godzilla comes in and kills every single one of his comrades, leaving him with what I suppose is gonna be lifelong PTSD. And then when he settled down, found a steady job, he's helping people out by disarming mines. Well, here comes Godzilla again, leaving him almost half dead. Well, damn. Okay, and then when Godzilla comes into Ginza, completely obliterating it, almost kills the girl that he loves, wow. Only for the movie to end with him narrowly escaping with his life while sending his plane into Godzilla's mouth. I don't know what you can say about this guy, but he's either the luckiest man in the entire history of planet Earth, or he's the unluckiest guy you'll ever meet. Someone could pretty much say that this is baby's first introduction to PTSD, but here's the thing, it works. It's a very good story. Koichi looks at Godzilla, this analog of war, and sees the deepest, darkest things that he's ever encountered in his life. The last things that he would want are for the terrors of war to come back. I mean, in the movie, we see Koichi trying to improve himself, even if it might be in the most self-destructive ways possible, but now he has people that he's responsible for. He has Akiko and the woman that tried to shove her way into his life, Kiriko. And he feels responsible for both of them now because they're a family. What makes this movie so good on this story level is that if you remove Godzilla completely and just substitute him for the enemy forces, for the Americans, or any other thing that you wanted to say, it would still work. Make those set pieces big bombing runs or soldiers actively storming an island. They will still have the same impact. Now, will it still have the same badass factor that Godzilla has? No, because Godzilla's Godzilla, but this still shows that they came up with a story first and then Godzilla came in. And that works a lot for Godzilla because that's the root of Godzilla as a character. It's a symbol for all of these things. The worst things that you can see in modern day Godzilla films is when a human main character, <laughs> Aaron Taylor Johnson, looks at Godzilla in the eye and they just feel a connection with him, you know? It's like, oh, this big gigantic lizard that's taller than God itself. Yeah, that's me. That's the worst thing a Godzilla movie can do because why are you trying to humanize it in that way? And why are you trying to, I don't know. I, I don't know. It might just be an antiquated way of thinking, but it just doesn't work out the way I wanted it to. Godzilla is an animalistic force of nature that is there to be horrific and terrifying. And he also deals with defeating other monsters that are also representing the things that, you know, are coming in to hurt people. It is what it is. And there is no definitive version of what a Godzilla should be. I mean, if you think that I have a problem with how goofy I think that entire thing with like the human characters in the American Godzilla movies is like, you're wrong because I love the goofiness of Godzilla because scenes like this are my shit. They are amazing. That's the kind of stuff that I love to see because it's campy as all hell. Absolutely lovely and it knows it. But when a Godzilla movie is trying to be serious and is trying to actively tell a story that is trying to connect to you in a personal level, it should be done like this. But even when we're just taking into account Godzilla as a physical monster that is capable of wreaking havoc across the entire world, he is amazing. I mean, this design of Godzilla is especially fantastic. It's a mix of all of the classic Godzillas, but again, bringing in some elements that are really refreshing to see. It's kind of, in my opinion, something more like a reptilian Godzilla from like the millennium era, but with more of the upright body from like the 1980s Godzillas that you would see. And he's just so powerful in a way where it just makes him feel unbeatable. And with the fact that he's also being backed up by his amazing orchestral theme, yeah, this guy's gonna do some damage. The execution of Godzilla in this movie is brilliant. And the connections to the 1954 iteration of Godzilla isn't just seen with him being shown as like a symbol for all of these things. It's also in the homages that they always play throughout. The mad scientist, or well, someone that looks just like a mad scientist, coming up with a creation that's gonna stop Godzilla dead in his tracks. In this case, yeah, well, it's not the exact same thing as an oxygen destroyer that will just completely annihilate life in that part of the ocean. This is also playing into the same kind of science, I guess you can say, because it's also using the manipulation of air that's gonna cause Godzilla to get trapped and fall under the water so that he won't be able to come back up 
And then again, there's a whole bunch of logic that goes in with that too. And the story also pokes its heads into other different iterations of Godzilla as a whole too, because you get different origins of where Godzilla comes from as a creature. Sprinkle in things like Godzilla being a prehistoric dinosaur that was found on an island instead of him being a iguana that gets irradiated, or that complete level of regeneration that just completely makes Godzilla overpowered in a completely different level of what a monster should be like from something like Shin Godzilla. This movie is a big love letter to the series and it pays off beautifully. I'm pretty excited to see if they're gonna continue this story of Godzilla that they're kind of teasing here because with that final scene, hey, it's pretty interesting to say the least. I just hope that it's not gonna take them so long to make another movie after this one because this one was pretty great. So with that, that was my take on Godzilla Minus One. Did you think this was surprisingly one of the best movies to come out this year? Or are you just wrong? Please let me know down in the comments below what you think. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.